Hi, my name is Aileen Perez, and in this special episode, I have a beautiful co-host, my sister, Miss Yaya. Thank you, beautiful lady. <laughs> I am so excited to be here today, standing in for Judy Solis. We miss you, Judy. We, we are here in Luxor, Washington Heights. Mm -hmm. And unless you've been under a rock on a deserted island with no communication, although that does sound nice, you would realize that the world has changed so much in the last two months due to the COVID-19 virus. And we want to start this episode sending our prayers and condolences to those who have lost loved ones in this pandemic. Also, we want to give a special shout out to our healthcare heroes yes. and essential workers. Mm -hmm. I actually witnessed the generosity of Gorayeb and Associates who teamed up with the nonprofit organization Sisa Pakari to do a food distribution in Woodside, Queens, one of the hardest hit communities in New York City. It is very important to us because Gorayeb, Los Abogados del Pueblo, is always here to support the community in good times, but more importantly, in difficult times. This is, a, this is a time where our Hispanic community, undocumented community, is affected the most. You know, it was a, it was a very, it, it impacted me from the moment I drove up because, you know, to see so many of our Latinos and our community that's in such need right now. Pues feliz, gracias a Dios y gracias a Corayel y, y Cisa Pacari, pues es una gran ayuda porque así tenemos para alimentar a nuestros hijos. As you can see, the line goes all the way down the block. Actually, it goes down for four blocks because it's very important this community has access to these kinds of services, thanks to Gorayev and Associates. We are here with Fanny Guadalupe of Sisa Pacari, organizer of this event, of this food distribution. Hola, ¿cómo estás, Fanny? Bueno, realmente estoy muy contenta y hoy toda la comunidad Una vez más, Gorayev, los abogados del pueblo, está, está apoyando a la comunidad. During this health crisis, there has been an economic impact. As we all know, thousands of restaurants, nightclubs, and bars have closed in New York City. Experts predict 50 to 60% of all venues will not reopen. But there is one concept emerging to stay in business, and it's the cloud kitchen concept. ULM met with the team behind Chef Papi's Kitchen. So the Cloud Kitchen concept is basically uh, one kitchen that uh, offers pickup and delivery only and executes uh, several different menu options. So I decided to launch Chef Papi Kitchens now specifically during the coronavirus pandemic because uh, basically restaurants were not allowed to uh, have people come in and sit down like they normally would, so it was just a perfect timing to offer a pickup and delivery option. Some of our beverage options have two concepts. One of them is Wahi Hugos, which is a concept based on craft juices, fresh juices directly from the food that has been brought in every single day, as well as healthy salads and wraps. I decided to invest in this Cloud Kitchen concept because it was the right time to do so. So right now is the right time to invest in the cloud kitchen because it allows people to come in and get to get served. Uh, Luxor was all about service, so now we're providing the, the service uh, virtually. Uh, currently, uh, we are doing deliveries using our site, our website, uh, Chef Papi Kitchens. So we partner up with Deerfield Foundation, uh, which is an affiliate of Deerfield Management. We are feeding our first responders in this partnership and uh, we are going to continue to do so uh, for the next coming months. This is not the time to sit and fold. This is a time to flourish and to figure it out. Whatever your situation is, whatever industry you're in, now is the time to shift and figure out how you can take your business, how you can take your brand to the next level. It's not about uh, sitting and folding, it's about growing and um, expanding. So. This is definitely what we're doing here and I'm just very happy to have the team that I have. This crisis shows business owners that they need to learn how to adapt and quickly. With that in mind, the owners of professional sports teams and organizations are trying to figure out how to have a season. We have our very own Maria Isabel to give us more on this. In the United States, professional sports leagues, with the exception of American football, have to postpone their season due to COVID-19. Major League Baseball postponed the start of their season, 
originally scheduled for Thursday, March 26. The league hopes to start training in early June and their season in early July. But everything depends on how COVID-19 evolves in different states. The NBA reopened some facilities on May 8, but only for individual and voluntary workouts and in cities where local government shelter-in-place policies are lifted. A date when the season will resume is not yet confirmed. For the WNBA, no decision has been made about when or if the season will start this year. The regular season was originally planned to begin May 15th. The NFL preseason or season has not been affected yet with the exception of the five games originally scheduled to be played internationally, four in the UK and one in Mexico City. Those games will be held in the United States. The season is expected to start Thursday, September 10, with 16 regular games spread over 17 weeks. On May 6, 2020, Major League Soccer and the Women National Soccer League were the first leagues in the United States to start individual and voluntary training sections at their team training facilities. For MLS, the matches are suspended until at least June 8. For the Women National Soccer League, the start of the season is unclear. Like most things related to COVID-19, there is perception and then there is reality. As of May 1st, 2020, the leagues have not confirmed how or when they will start their season. And it's even more unclear when fans are going to be able to be back at the stadium. The 2020 schedule is subject to change. This is everything for today. I'll see you guys next time. One industry that spiked during this pandemic is the liquor industry. I myself tried to do a couple of drinks at home and I was unsuccessful. But we had the pleasure to interview Elena Maria Hernandez, brand manager of Aguardiente Cristal and Rom Viejo de Caldas. Y estamos aquí con Elena Maria Hernandez, quien es básicamente una persona que está representando la compañía Royal Wine y las marcas que representa viene siendo Aguardiente Cristal y Ron Viejo de Caldas. Es un placer tenerte aquí con nosotros, hablar de esta marca súper exitosa y súper conocida. Introduciste a esta compañía y a esta marca que tiene esa conexión contigo de tus raíces. Empecé como representante de marca de diferentes marcas del, de la industria del licor, de cervezas, de vinos, de diferentes espíritus, pues así fue que empezó como mi carrera en este campo. Tus inicios, pero ahora has progresado mucho más, ahora estás haciendo otro papel dentro de esta industria. Cuéntanos un poco de tu papel. Soy la brand manager de La Guardiente Cristal y Ron Viejo de Caldas. Son realmente de la región de donde soy nacida y criada, que eso es un orgullo y una coincidencia demasiado grande. Y ahora cuéntanos, ¿cuál es tu trago favorito? A ver si Erwin nos lo prepara en un ratico. Sí. De mis favoritos está, es uno que estamos manejando con el ron viejo de Caldas, 8 años, y es el Old Fashion. Me imagino que estos espíritus tienen más o menos la, la, una similitud de cómo se procesa, pero a ustedes tener su propia madera. Y tener todo en casa. Sí, va a tener entonces un sabor en particular que no se va a poder duplicar al menos que ustedes beban ron viejo. ¿no? ¿No, verdad? Exacto, exacto. Y para los que son realmente conocedores de ron, con solo se percibe en la primer toma. Se percibe la suavidad, se percibe la fineza de los sabores, porque también las características propias de la región, es una región que está a más de 2.200 metros sobre el nivel del mar, tiene también una temperatura baja y la humedad es alta, entonces hace que el proceso de añejamiento sea muy natural. El aguardiente sí es la bebida tradicional. Estás haciendo una colaboración con el mixólogo Eddie. Entonces van a hacer unas demostraciones riquísimas que vamos entonces a ver acá. Bueno, hoy estamos aquí con Eddie. Eddie es el mixólogo de Luxor. Hola, Eddie, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú cómo estás? Muy bien, un placer tenerte acá. Cuéntanos, ¿qué nos tienes preparado para hoy? Hoy vamos a preparar un rum old fashioned. Es una variación de un trago clásico, hecho en este caso con ron viejo de caldas, añejo. Bueno, cuéntanos, ¿qué tiene este cóctel? 
Perfecto, vamos a empezar con dos trozos de naranja cortados bien finitos. En este caso vamos a utilizar media onza del sirop de azúcar negra, bien concentrado. ¿Okay? Ahí lo vamos a majar un poquito, no muy fuerte, solo para extraer los aceites de la naranja. Angostura Bitters, son solo tres pasitos de esto, uno, dos, tres. Aquí simplemente añadimos el hielo. Antes de añadir el alcohol, lo movemos un poquito. Añadimos dos onzas del ron. Lo movemos un poquito más. ¡Qué lindo! Perfecto. Ahora puedes probar tu ron old fashion. Claro que sí. Salud. Salud. Oh, wow. Delicioso. So, Messia, I hear that you're part of a great project coming from Colombia, is it? Yes, actually, Codiscos, one of the most well-known record labels in Colombia, has put out a compilation album of some of the greatest salsa singers of our time. Wow. And I was asked to participate, which is a great honor, produced by Diego Galé, and it comes out May 15th. I'm very excited to be Ooh, a part of it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. Oh, but you have launched your YouTube tutorial page, Missy. Tell us about that. Yes. So I just wanted, always wanted to do kind of like videos about curly hair beginners and people that are transitioning and want to learn more of how to take care of their hair. I'm also going to be talking about simple ways of doing makeup and skincare, you know, because we, we're reaching that age, girl, you know. I don't saying? know what you're talking about. I know, I'm just okay. saying. But together, we have our own thing. It goes, sister, sister, ow. And episode eight is out and available on all podcast platforms. We and it's and it's with Flash. Oh, I know. Yes. Of the universe. Mm -hmm. But she also has like an athleisure line called Eviscali. Mm -hmm. Eviscali. Always in always. Well, that does it for today's episode of ULM from Luxor in Washington Heights. And please keep in mind, guys, to stay safe and healthy during these difficult times. And remember to stay connected with us. Email us at subscribe at ulmedia.net. This episode is brought to you by Chef Papi Kitchens, powered by Luxor. If you are looking for a delicious catered meal or just looking for lunch or dinner, log on to chefpapikitchens.com.